Hey everyone, welcome back to the Micro Lab. I'm your host as always, Will. Uh, we're going to be doing something a little different today as we sort of always kind of do something different. Uh, we're just going to be doing some really fun and simple chemistry out in the backyard today. Uh, this is how we can create hydrogen gas out of common sort of kitchen household supplies. We have Drano here and then we have some uh, aluminum foil. The mixture of both of these will produce hydrogen gas, which as most of us probably know is kind of explosive. Um, and so we're going to go outside, explode some balloons, have a little fun. I'll go over some of the details a little later during the video, um, but pretty much we can just jump right into it. The first thing that you want to do is to prepare your reaction vessel as well as your supplies. For the aluminum foil here, you want to cut it such that the pieces are very, very small. This increases surface area, which will increase the reaction rate as well as the amount of gas produced. Uh, next, you want to prepare your vessel. This could be a plastic bottle or some other container. I personally elected to use two liter plastic bottles. Other containers might be better for this though. Uh, next, you want to go and grab Drano just from the local Walmart or store. It's, Im it's probably important that you get uh, Drano that does not have like the gel easy pour component. The active ingredient here is sodium hydroxide. You can even pick this up at your local hardware store, but Drano is really the easiest and most available to most people. Now, funny enough, a lot of this video is going to be sort of how not to do it properly. You'll see I'll point out different things that I should have done uh, more appropriately that would make this experience a lot better for everybody. Uh, but basically you want to head out to a, a ventilated area maybe a garage would work just fine in this case I'm outside uh, and as you can see I fashioned a small funnel out of another plastic bottle so I can put my uh, aluminum foil pieces in but funny enough I didn't cut these pieces small enough and so they got jammed up in the neck of the tube and I later spilled it all over my patio which was really a pain to clean up so really you want to make these aluminum foil pieces as small as you can physically get them you can use a shredder that's what I elected to do a little later uh, you can just ensure that they're cut into really small pieces. But first, you want to put the aluminum foil pieces inside of your plastic vessel. Here's the bottle after all of the aluminum pieces are right at the bottom. This took me about 10 minutes, so you're really saving yourself a lot of work if you decide to cut the pieces up smaller or smaller, or use a shredder or something like that. Next, you want to pour the Drano right down the center of the bottle. Be careful not to get it on the edge or the lip of the bottle, because this could degrade the balloon. You want it to go right down the middle of the bottle onto the aluminum foil pieces. I poured in about maybe a cup to a cup and a half of Drano onto, onto the aluminum pieces. I probably added too much in this case. You really want the Drano just to be above the aluminum pieces, um, but it's not extremely important. It'll be more pertinent later that you really don't want to ramp this up too big, especially if you're using the gel easy pour variety of Drano. Next, you want to fix your balloon to the top. You can do this by just putting the lip of the balloon over the lip of the bottle. At this point, hydrogen gas is already being produced, um, but be careful. Whenever I'll shake it later, or whenever you're doing this experiment at home, the bottle and the surface where the aluminum foil and the uh, Drano are touching will get really, really hot. As you can quickly see, the bottle even begins to melt towards the center, which I'll point out here. Uh, I'll just let this run sort of as a time lapse as the uh, balloon slowly fills up.
At this point I elected to take the balloon off the bottle. It's much smaller than you might have noticed moments ago. This is because it either got too hot or the Drano itself melted the edge of the balloon where it contacted the bottle. So it began to leak air basically. So this is when I decided to take the balloon off and see if I could blow this up. Once I took the balloon off, I had my assistant hold it just above the table here. It was really windy and so I could not just set it on the table, it would just roll away. Uh, and as a matter of fact, when I tried to go and light it with my candle lighter here, the wind just kept blowing out my flame. And so we ventured into the garage where it was less windy to hopefully get a much better explosion to get that on camera and to see how magnificent this small balloon of hydrogen gas could potentially be. Here is the balloon inside of the garage, which you will hopefully find to be pretty funny. I want to die. <laughs> you just... <laughs> Here is an attempt with a lot more aluminum foil. These were brought through the shredder so they are really fine pieces. And I used probably about double what I did in the last one. Uh, but as you'll see here, it's probably not the best idea to go uh, bigger in this case. As soon as I poured in the Drano and uh, lightly agitated it, the bubbles that form within the gel solution present in the Drano began to bubble up and bubble and bubble too fast for me to sort of control. And so I didn't really have time to put the balloon on, get the balloon off before it began to bubble up and over and outside of the bottle. And so for this case again, I'm just going to play the audio sort of as it happened live during this shooting process. That's, that's good. Just want to get a good reaction. Re reaction. Now put the balloon on. At this point, I elected I to so quickly leaking. move it from the tray table onto Dude, the garage floor so any spillage would just happen on the garage floor. Here is another attempt with that same bottle. After I removed the balloon, waited for the bubbles to subside down a little bit, I brought it back onto the tray table, put a new balloon on it, and then sh shook it up again. But we see the same result where the hydrogen gas coming from out of solution creates these bubbles. And in this case, the bubbles would rise and rise all the way to the top and out of the balloon and the bottle. You should put some, uh... And so for the final attempt, we only had one more bottle of a larger size. And so here is that final attempt for you. And so here's the small pop that we get from this hydrogen balloon. Alright, that pretty much brings us to the end of this video and to this process. Uh, there are many different things looking back on it that I could have improved on. One I'd say easily was that the aluminum pieces were too big the first time I tried. Uh, it's definitely worth your time to try to use a shredder or just scissors and be more careful and make the aluminum pieces much, much smaller. Next you should maybe attempt to make a concentrated sodium hydroxide solution. The Drano works perfectly fine for making hydrogen gas like this, but most Dranos have a sort of gel additive uh, that bubbles up really, really terribly, basically, and can ruin your sort of balloon in your experiment. So it might be beneficial to go back and get concentrated sodium hydroxide from your local hardware store. But anyway, I showed you how you can make hydrogen gas and kind of have a little fun. Hydrogen gas is used for a lot of different chemical reactions, um, but in this case I was just trying to set it on fire. Uh, thank you all for watching. Feel free to subscribe, feel free to leave a comment, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Take it easy, everybody.